Hi YouTube. Now yeah, we're up here by the rabbit cages. Um, I got rid of two of the chinchillas. Um, one of the family members has got a, uh, I guess it's a cousin or something. Anyway, she's doing 4-H and needed uh, a 4-H project. So they already had one rabbit. I gave them two more. The chinchillas I had, one male and one female. But we have little babies. Right there. We had two in the corner right there. Uh, she had four, but um, two died. I don't know. It, we had a cold snap there, and she isn't a very. She's a young mother. She, first litter she's had, so I don't know what happened. But anyway, we lost two, and we got. I don't know if you can see down in there or not, but we got two little rabbits. Okay. The other ones didn't work. Um, didn't take. I'm gonna breed breed them again next week, and uh, start all over. But the video today is on a request that I had from a friend of mine. Um, he says you need to do a, a video on your tractor or your my buggy, whatever you want to call it, my contraption, and how I build it. All right, we're up here at the tractor slash buggy contraption. <laughs> All right, it's a uh, it like I say it was that bus over there. The running gear out of that bus it was a camper and nobody would give me any money for it for what i wanted out of it so i took it off my nephew or my grandson stayed in it for a summer <clears throat> and then i pulled the front running gear out of it and uh, this is the reason it's a six two or an eight two diesel uh, and the gm eight two diesel is not a very popular motor they're a gutless wonder when on a full-size vehicle like on the bus you come to a hill and it falls flat on its face <laughs> you're lucky you do 45 mile an hour going up the hill but anyway um, the way it's set up now works good now I didn't change anything on the front everything's the same on the front I didn't change usually I change the motor mounts but this here I like to slide the motor back because it gives it more weight uh, in the center of the vehicle and it pulls better gets better traction and the front end isn't so heavy but there's a this rail right here is curled up I don't know if you can see that on the video or not but this is bent up and the rest of the frame is flat so this being bent up gives it enough room for the exhaust to go on and I didn't have anything to bend this kind of material this stuff's pretty thick so I just left that the way it was. But I did. All right, this thing was long, as you can see that there. I cut four foot out of the center of it, and right here's where I welded it. Um, this weld right here is where I welded it on this front, and on the back side I welded it, and then I plated it. Um, put her back together, and the drive shaft. Um, is not that hard. I don't know if you can see it underneath there or not, but the drive shaft isn't that hard to shorten. A um, little bit of grinding, a little bit of uh, TLC, and now it's not balanced or anything like that. But it doesn't vibrate. I don't go that fast going down the road, but it does fine. And then I cut three foot off the back end, and then I put the bumper on it that was on the bus and then I added the Reese hitch and then I added another Reese hitch that I had laying around so we had two hitches now I've got the top one and the bottom one and the, bo the top one here is the one I use for pulling for like trees and stuff because it gives it more down force I guess you'd call it when I'm pulling from up here I get better traction this one here I use for hauling stuff, like the trailers. Usually this trailer is down here, but I had, um, this is a, uh, I think a three or four inch drop on this one. So it, when I get it down that far, it's too low, and I drag when I come out of the gate. So I put it up on this one. 
uh, like I say, the box was on a Toyota pickup. I built that, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Um, it worked, come out just about right. I mean, it's it's a little bit short. Um, the cabs kind of slope like this. I was going to cut these bars off, but I didn't. The um, kind of saves on the window if I throw wood in. Oh, uh, what else can I tell you? Oh, there's a bunch of weight in the back. These are uh, cement blocks or chimney block, whatever you want to call them. Uh, there was a bunch of them, and then I had a bunch of uh, cinder blocks in there, too. Hi. That's my calico cat. She thinks she's got to be a movie star. <laughs> um, tires. These are the original tires that came with the bus. They're highway tires. They... Not good. They, Cali, they, I, I have to carry my chains with me because these things, if it gets wet and I get on a blade of grass, I'll spin. I won't go nowhere. The front ones are the same as the back ones. I mean, it doesn't make any difference on the front ones. But the back ones, I want, I'm trying to trade them off on a set of snow and mud and snow tires or either that or they do make a tractor tire tread for them and but they're a little pricey and I haven't found a deal on them yet on the front I've got a Myers um, snow plow hydraulic pump on there and I've got a plow for it uh, but it's a small one it was on my Toyota and this thing's a lot wider than what the plow is. And we'll go over to this side. And we'll show you all the fancy wiring that I got. Now this only took two weekends to put together. Um, one weekend of welding and another weekend of finishing up everything. Uh, the wiring is just... All you need for diesel is an on and off switch and a starter button. And the on and off switch goes to the... Uh, um, fuel shut off solenoid and the other one like I say just to the goes to the starter solenoid and kicks the starter in that's pretty pretty simple once I get inside I'll show you the, what I got in there um, this fuel tank come off of an RV um, that I parted out uh, well, I used a lot of the parts on the bus that I took off of the RV that I had to give to me and this was a spare tank it had two tanks on it so I put this on here. Now this is diesel, but it, the only time I run diesel is in the winter time. The uh, summertime, I run used vegetable oil. It smells like French fries going down the road. <laughs> the cab that is off of, I believe, an Oliver or a John Deere. Um, of course, I put lights on it. It was setting in the weeds. I had to cut a tree out of the one window and to get it on there. Um, the mirrors came off the bus. The lights I had laying around from some other stuff when I was driving truck. I had some lights laying around here but I believe that's off of a Oliver. The way it, the size of it. I mean it's got a pretty good size cab and the Olivers had hydraulic systems in the back. I, I believe this is an Oliver. It might not be. I don't know. I ain't for sure. Anyway, we'll climb up inside, and here's a steering wheel, which is the original bus. My switches, this is my ignition switch, this is my starter switch, this is my headlights, and this is my flashers. Got a parking brake that works. Um, these are the vet switches for my valves for my... Uh, Hydraulic pump for my plow. Um, automatic. It's Allison automatic. Power brakes. Throttle. Don't have a hand throttle. I just use a foot throttle. Um, plenty of storage on the back side of the seat here. I, I'm going to take this seat out. It's a, one of the old bus seats. I'm going to take it out. And then I had to keep something original from the bus. <laughs> That's the rear view mirror that was in the bus. I use that for watching back behind to see if I've run over anything or lose something off the back. But anyway, 
got to keep some of the bus stuff. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. And now I told you I run it on used vegetable oil. All right, I keep my used vegetable oil down here in the tank over here. A lot of people say you got to have heaters on it and you got to run it through three or four different strainer systems. Um, now I don't run it straight by no means, but I filter it through a nylon sock first and then I leave it set in another tank and then I take and leave it set there and I got a the same pump that I use that's that blue thing up there that's the pump I'll take and I've got a, a fuel filter that goes on that I don't remember how many micron it is um, well I can show you the filter I think I got one in the bus but anyway that's got a canister on it that I pump through when I take it out of the other tank after it leaves it, leave it set and the sediment goes to the bottom the rest of it and then the, what I don't get to the bottom I run it through that filter I'll show it to you it's not a very big filter either it's just a spin on yeah, here it is. that's the filter I use it's a 3122 by Napa um, that's what I run the fuel through and then I just put it right into the tank and runs good I mean it, it's a little noisy because of course you can see I got straight pipes there's no muffler at all on it it's a little noisy and the cab rattles like I say it's it's a piece of work <laughs> but it runs and it does what I want it to do um, I aligned this now there's a trick to getting this all square all right when I cut the frame off I went from my weld spot okay I went from point to point at a and it I crisscrossed all right what I did is I went from one side to the other side and then I went to this side to this side and I wiggled it back and forth until I got the same distance in between so it's pretty close I mean it's under a quarter of an inch maybe or less out of square I mean with what the original frame was so from what I could tell it's like 330 seconds according to the tape measure that were out of my rear ends off just a little bit but not much I mean I can still run this thing down the road 50 mile an hour and it steers and drives nice it's if that's if you can stand it because it rattles so bad but um that's the story on this thing um i use it pretty much every day um i've added some parts to it and of course this is actually registered i can run this down the road with the smv sticker on it and the flashing lights um makes it legal and it's classified as a farm vehicle um the only thing I got left to put on it, like I say, I got lights all the way around it, I got flashing lights on it, um, which is just a flasher. I run all the lights through a flasher except for the headlights. Um it well I'm gonna have to get different headlights, they're full of water. That ain't no good. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the only thing I got left to do that I bought for it is I got a windshield wiper that I got a mount on it, and then uh, it won't be too bad going down the road in the winter or in the, in the winter time or the summertime if I get caught in the rain. But I'm a little upset about them lights. They're full. I don't know if you can see that or not. They're both full of water. That one's got a lot, about half, a quarter full. <laughs> anyway, it wasn't cheap either. That's my setup. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> it's just a piece that I throw together in a couple weekends, and I, it worked out great. I mean, it, it just does whatever I want, and like I say, I get my used oil, and I get it free from a restaurant up here, and, well, that was full last year before I switched over to... Um, 
diesel fuel. In the wintertime I run the diesel fuel because it's too cold. But I can go down to like 40 degrees, 45 degrees, and uh, sorry about the wind. The wind's starting to kick up here. I can go down to about 45, 40 degrees, and I can still run the, the vegetable oil. It's a little harder starting in, in the mornings, but it will start. I mean, I've already been down to, it's frost. I've had frost on the windows, and it still started on the vegetable oil, but I start adding diesel fuel to it, and then finally I'm just completely on to diesel fuel in the wintertime. And uh, it starts fine. I don't have any problems with it. Uh, it doesn't burn any more fuel as far as vegetable oil compared to uh, the uh, diesel fuel. Uh, the comparison, I might use just a little bit more per mile or per gallon, whatever, um, in vegetable oil, but hey, it's free. Like I say, I get it from a restaurant, and I just have to pick it up every week. Um, over here's the other barrel, um, that one with the black on it. That was a water barrel, and it had a leak in it, and I had to change the valve on it, and uh, I use that for the other oil. And then uh, I've got the other side of it cut off, the black off of it, and I can see how full it is. And then I just run it in there with my sock, and then, like I say, I'll pump out of that with that filter system on there and uh, put it right into the buggy tractor slash whatever. So <laughs> that's our style around here. Get by with what you got. All right, YouTube. Bye. Ah. Got any comments or questions, just go ahead and give me a jingle on the computer. Thanks for watching.